Hey everybody, my name is Paul, and like many of you, I'm a developer who has been reaching for a variety of AI tools to try to accelerate my output and at the end of the day, ultimately maximize my value add to the project at hand. Recently, I've developed a pretty good workflow that's been working for me to allow me to do things like push PRs while I'm on the stair step at the YMCA, get approvals on my Apple Watch when Claude code gets stuck, or, you know, type to it anywhere, open up little web pages with what the plan is. Maybe walk around my house and get dictations and AI summaries read to me so I don't need to be sitting at my computer. And then I can click approve on my Apple Watch. It's pretty great. So some of my colleagues said, hey, how are you doing this? And I figured, why not? I'd make a little video going over my AI stack and how I've been finding great success in building apps that used to take me two to four weeks and literally two hours. So let's get into it. Now, I already mentioned one of the stars of the show, and that is an age-old technology called Tmux or Terminal Multiplexer. It does exactly that. It takes a terminal and it multiplexes it to anywhere you want. You can install Tmux from a variety of sources, but if you're on Mac, it's pretty simple with brew install Tmux. I already have in my system and you can start a new Tmux session, which is like a terminal essentially with the Tmux command. I'm going to name my session and you can do that with Tmux new dash S and I can give it a name. So I'm in a folder here called school. It's a little demo folder I'm using. So I'm gonna name this session school. And in the lower left, you're gonna see a blue tag pop up. There will be something similar in the default one. I can share this one if anybody's similar. There's a variety of Tmux plugins in a plugin ecosystem. The rabbit hole goes deep, but we can stop right here and just say, you can open a new Tmux session once you have Tmux installed. So I'm dropped back in my main old development directory here. So I'm going to change directory back into school where we were before. Tmux provides some great features for us. It's going to let Claude code run things in the background, such as a Next.js app, look at logs while it's doing things, run type check in another little session while it's doing things and not get blocked. It's going to let us connect from our phone and attach to this section or another session, maybe the debug one. Tmux is super powerful and is sort of like the hub to all the spokes and features that we're going to be discussing today. And that's all you need on the Mac, really. The second thing you need is something on your phone so you can connect. You can just have any old SSH client. And the one I love and would recommend is Terminus. You can use a variety of different applications out there. This isn't sponsored anyway. I just use Terminus and I love it. It has a lot of ergonomics that can make it easy to navigate Claude code and some custom commands it can put in, such as something that can show you how to switch between plan mode and auto accept mode, which happens with some special Tmux configurations and some Terminus configurations. In any case, I can show you how Terminus works because I have my iPhone screen share up here in my Mac. So I'm gonna bring this over and you can connect to your Mac over SSH once you have it enabled. There's some simple steps to do. And then you can connect to your Claude Code Tmux session or attach to it running here. Now, how do you know what your Mac host name is? It's pretty simple here. We'll open up a new terminal. You can just use the hostname command. This is available on pretty much any Linux or like Unix computer you're on. So here it's macbook3.local. Click and drag your SSH key onto your iPhone using AirDrop. And then you can open up Terminus, configure that SSH key. And here I have my Mac. So I'm going to connect to that SSH connection. I'm in on my Mac right now. And I can now run commands as if I was there. So let's run the Tmux command. Instead of new s for new session, we'll do Tmux attach and we can attach to a session. Now you have to give it the dash T flag. That is like the tag instead of, I, I wish it was dash S that would make so much more sense, but it's Tmux attach dash T. And then we give the Tmux session name. So I'm going to do school and here we are. So whatever I type here on the left, let's do echo. Hello, mom. But look, we, we made content. Now let's go over the phone. There it is. So I could be on the couch. I could be cooking, which I love to do. I'll have it while I'm chefing up some stuff. Uh, nature could be calling and you can make sure Claude code ain't stalling. That's fine and dandy. How do we do it when we're at the YMCA? How do you do it when you're out on a walk? That's where you need tail scale. It's one of my favorite like magical DNS utilities out there. It's free. You can download it on your Mac and most importantly, you can download it on your iPhone. So let me bring my iPhone share back up here. I'll search for the tail scale app. There it is. And I'm on my little tail scale network. So I have tail scale booted on my Mac up here. I have tail scale booted on my phone. I can click on my MacBook and there's this thing called the Tailscale Magic DNS. Here it is, MacBook Pro 3. It kind of derives from your host name and then it's dot some crazy stuff, tail nine, whatever, whatever, dot ts dot net. So you can copy this and now on my iPhone's Terminus app, I can use this magic DNS name to connect to my Mac over 5G, over 4G, wherever I am. So I have that set up in my Terminus. Let's go back to Terminus. I want to cancel out of this local Mac M3 connection 
And here I have the tail scale one. So inside of this, let's actually click edit. I have the IP or host name as that magic DNS. And just like with the local one, click on it and I'm inside my Mac. Thrown back into development, of course, we're gonna do tmux attach, dash T, school, to get back where we were to the, the hello moms. But we're connected wherever we want in the world on our iPhone into Claude code. Well, we're not in Claude code yet, so let's boot her up. Claude, and there we are. We're inside the Claude code runtime. Check on the phone. Welcome to Claude. It's beautiful. Okay, let's ask Claude to do something. And we didn't even get to the good stuff yet. I mentioned letting Claude code do something like boot an XJS app, not get stuck, and then run commands against it, or run commands in a third window or a fourth window. Tmux lets you do that if you tell Claude code how to use it, and that piece, if you tell Claude code how to use it, is essential. So what we're going to do is just take a look at this file. When you install Claude code, you're going to get this .claude directory. And inside of there, if you don't have it already, you can make a claude.md file. This file is awesome. It gets loaded every time you make a Claude session. So whatever you put in there, it's like the Bible. Claude code will always listen to it. So let's tail out the last 15 lines and take a look at some of this language that I have in there. You have full and bridled access to the Tmux terminal multiplexer tool installed on this whatever computer you have. And most importantly, you are required to always use Tmux with a new session when running commands that will boot apps or begin long running processes. Now, whether you're using my configuration here that we can provide in the video description or you're writing your own, there's little nuances that you want to thread throughout the prompt that always just hammer it subliminally back into its mind. Sort of like Coca-Cola commercials. Why are they there? I already know about Coke. They know. They just want to remind you. That's what you need to do here. So it's things like saying new session. Tmux has this thing called panes. You can also do splits. There's Tmux windows. You want Claude code to stay at the session level for now. We can get into panes in future videos, but session is one of the top level entities in Tmux. It's one of the most powerful. So I'm saying required, you always, you want to use Tmux. And then you want to tell it how it names the Tmux sessions. I want to hop on my iPhone and say, I know there's going to be a, you know, a Next.js app running on school dash next or school dash web. So here's how we do that. You want to say you always want to do in a Tmux session named your project name and square brackets. Square brackets are a cool little key that tells, you know, like template something dash whatever it is. So having this language thread throughout the system prompts that you write as well, your memory files like we have here in your home directory, Claude.md, super critical. They will enable Claude code to use Tmux to its greatest capability, boot things and let things fly. So let's actually see that in action. We want to see Claude code open up multiple Tmux sessions and leverage them all at once. First thing I want to do is switch into plan mode. We can go over what mode you want to use and how you can activate sub agents in plan mode in a future video. But for now, we're just going to be in normal plan mode. And I get to show you my new favorite AI tools that enables me to really get my ideas out on paper and be very descriptive. And that's an app called Super Whisper. Super Whisper, it's really cool. You can make custom vocabulary. For example, I'm saying if I say and or, do it and slash or. If I'm saying at latest, do you know the at symbol latest. This is awesome. So we're going to use Super Whisper. We're going to give a little prompt right here and then hit enter. We want to make a small Next.js app to let our viewers know to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And most importantly, leave a comment if we should dig into something that you're super interested in more detail. We're going to go into more content that will come later in the series, such as using Tmux for multi-agent simultaneous development, then using Git work trees. We're going to show how to use Tmux to attach in a variety of different pre-configured ways from your iPhone with hyper-curated button menus with different terminal agents. We're going to show how to make sure you can take full advantage of plan mode and all the different cloud code sub-agent capabilities, and then configuring hooks to work individually for you how you want dictation read for you. Do you want to have Cloud Code send you push notifications on your Apple Watch and iPhone? Fully configurable if you know the tools of the trade to stay at the bleeding edge and take full advantage of what Anthropic and all these giants are releasing. We pasted these lines in. You can see that Cloud Code's gonna chomp on them. And we can bring over the iPhone. And you know, if you were walking away from your house, you would see all this happening live right here. It's coalescing as it's doing this task. And Pro tip, if you see task, that means sub, a sub agent has been spawned. So a small little Claude code is going in a little process somewhere else and it's exploring the directory structure to see what we have, which is nothing because <laughs> this app hasn't been started yet. So we're going to go let this cook a little bit and see what it comes back with. Okay, Claude code has a little plan for us. So it's going to set up the Next.js app using create next app. And you know what, just for giggles, we're going to bring it over here on our iPhone and we can go to this first option and auto accept edits because I might be out or exercising. 
Subagent uh, task completed. Oh, it looks like a subagent task has completed. I was given a dictation from one of my hooks right there. All right, I'm going to make a little bit more space right here because I do expect Claude Code per our instructions to use the powers of Tmux. So I would like to see that in action. Let's boot up some other terminals right here on the Mac side and we can get a command ready. So instead of Tmux new session, we'll use that Tmux attach, right? With the tag flag. So it looks like it's sending keys with the send keys to school debug. So let's attach, attach to that. And here we are, Claude is running commands in here. We can kind of check them out and see what's happening. And we can do this on the phone too. Let's bring the iPhone up, open up a new remote tail scale connect. And just like so, we can do tmux attach t school. And now we're seeing everything that we would have seen on the computer remotely on the iPhone from wherever we might be. Now I did hint at something called an approval server. That's really neat. Things over here like bash or perhaps update to do's. That's a tool call. You can say before you use it, after you use it, do this thing or hey when a user sends a prompt do this thing run this bash script run this typescript step or it might be now there's one special hook called notification and claude will trigger this hook anytime it needs your attention the notification hook is super powerful and i'll tell you about it as claude code is using these two different terminals to do its business so what you can do is have it boot up an ephemeral web server on some port that is just free on your machine and then forward that information in a hyperlink over to your iphone and that way, if you can boot up some little interface that says approve, deny, or capture this input from the iPhone and send it over to that Tmux terminal, you could reply quickly on the go without having to open up an SSH connection and do that whole thing. Now, how can you deliver that hyperlink? Should you send it in an email? Should you hook up Twilio and do it in an SMS message? You could, or you could use this thing called pushover. And that's another thing in the AI stack that I just really want to show you guys. Pushover, it, it's awesome. It costs five bucks for life. Let me bring over the iPhone once more and we're going to go home. I'm going to open up Pushover here. So as Claude Code is running, when it needs approvals, I have the hooks set up in such a way that it'll say like, hey, you have this school project. Claude is ready. It needs to do something. And it'll give me this hyperlink right here. And notice on the hyperlink, if you can see it, it says MacBook Pro 3 tail 98 whatever whatever dot ts dot net. It has that tail scale magic DNS on a random port. So the idea is when I click on this, it'll forward my iPhone in my Chrome browser or Safari or whatever to my MacBook, to a little thing that's running. It'll take in my input and it'll send keys over to the Tmux session where Claude Code is running right here and do my bidding so I don't need to do it through an SSH terminal. So that's awesome. It gives me two different ways to communicate through Claude Code. You can do it through the Terminus SSH connection or you could do it through a from ephemeral web server that you can make it look however you want, present it however you want beamed directly to your iPhone. Now looking back at these two little Tmux sessions, if you're wondering if there's more happening, what other sessions are running, you can always do Tmux LS. You can see we have two school, school debug, that's it. And look at that, it wants to start the dev server. So let's see if it does start the dev server. If it does start it in a new Tmux session. It does school dev, so let's go attach to that. Looks like it already hit an error because when you open up Tmux, it does go to whatever home directory you set it to be. Usually Claude Code can figure it out. It's like, ah, oh, I'm in this more high up directory. Let me go down in here and actually start it. It did find it. It did start Next.js on port 3000. We have three different terminals going right here. I haven't touched a single thing on any of this since we gave it the prompt with Super Whisper with her voice. Okay, and let's open up localhost 3000. And there we go. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to see something in more detail in particular. Let's pick whatever gets the most upvotes, I guess, and we'll keep making more videos to further the series. All the stuff you see here, we're definitely going to get into and more. We're going to get into how you can use Claude Code, the auto accept edits, whether that be in plan mode, using sub agents in plan mode, push notifications on the Apple Watch and the iPhone, ephemeral web dev development servers for approvals, and more. So let us know. Stay tuned. It was awesome hanging with you guys. And I'll see you around. Peace.